Uh, we start in Ukraine, where President Zelensky has called an emergency meeting of the National Security Council following the destruction of a dam in the south of the country. This is a video tweeted by Mr. Zelensky showing the breach Kakova hydroelectric dam. He says the shelling of the dam only confirms for the whole world that the Russians must be expelled from every corner of Ukrainian land. Unverified videos overnight showed a series of intense explosions around the dam. But the two sides are blaming each other for blowing up the dam near Kherson with potentially deadly consequences for communities downstream. These are satellite pictures of the dam on Monday showing partial damage, reportedly after earlier shelling by Russian forces. The governor of Kherson region says the evacuation of the region has begun, with 80 settlements said to be affected. He says within five hours, the water will reach a critical level. And these images from Korobel downstream show flooding of houses and garages in a residential area. Ukraine State Atomic Energy says the destruction of the dam poses a threat to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, though the situation there is currently under control. Well, let's speak to our Ukraine correspondent, James Waterhouse, who's in Kyiv for us. And, and what's the latest? What more can you tell us about this? Well, we know, it, I think it's clear that there has at least been a, a breach of the dam. I don't think we're going to know for some time exactly who was behind it definitively, but it's the sight of water flowing southward uh, for, uh, has huge implications for both sides. For the Ukrainian side, you have populations further south, not least with the city of Kherson, that are at risk of major flooding. Uh, and this is also part of the river which Ukrainian forces, uh, where Ukrainian forces have been making small probing attacks as part of the early stages of its major counter-offensive. This river mouth effectively has now got a whole lot wider. And then you have the Russian side where further upstream, it's long been in, in control of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Europe's biggest. And the six reactors there rely on what is a wide part of the river, rely on the water there for its cooling system. There have long been concerns over the goings on at the plant, just how safe it is. Uh, power has been shut off before, cooling systems haven't worked before. And so this will cause a lot of concern. It makes more sense in a military uh, sense for, for Russia to have taken out the mine. It was accused of, of laying explosives there last year, which it denied. It denies being responsible this time. But if we think of it as a defensive measure, by making the river a whole lot wider, then it would make more sense uh, from, from that perspective. However, the Moscow installed official in the area has said that it will cause water supply issues for people in the occupied Crimean Peninsula further south. These are people that Russia uh, is trying to portray itself as, as, as being the, the rightful ruler. So it's a complicated picture, but this, this will have major implications. And it's, it's hugely significant, this, isn't it? I'm seeing quotes from some Ukrainian foreign minister uh, saying that this is putting thousands of civilians uh, at risk. Uh, it would be a, a big claim for Russia to, to say that, this is, that it's managed to achieve this, I suppose, at a time where we're also talking about how this counteroffensive that's been expected for so long is perhaps in its initial stages. Yes, I think... You know, this this is part of that, I think. I think we've, we've seen the early stages of the counter-offensive. We've had another claim from Russia in as many days that uh, that it's repelled another Ukrainian attack, this time saying it's killed more than 1,000 troops, that it's destroyed more than 100 armoured vehicles, including Western-supplied Leopard tanks. These are claims we cannot verify, but we know there's been a sizable increase in military movement. The UK Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly, is on his second visit to Ukraine since the full-scale invasion. He's reinforced the UK's support for Ukraine and given his reaction, uh, effectively condemning the explosion on the dam and urged Russia to pull out completely. Well, I've heard the reports of the uh, explosion at the dam and the risks of flooding. It's too early for me to make any kind of meaningful assessment of uh, the details of what has happened. But it's worth remembering, of course, that the only reason that this is an issue at all is because of Russia's unprovoked 
uh, invasion, full-scale invasion uh, of Ukraine. Uh, we will uh, continue to assess the developing situation, but of course we repeat what we have said throughout this conflict, which is the best thing that Russia could do now is withdraw their troops immediately. Can I ask for, uh, uh, for the Secretary, if this is true, what would this mean for the course of this war? Well, look, uh, I'm not going to speculate as to the details of this. Clearly, there is uh, an ongoing situation here. There is a risk to life because of the flood risk, and I know the uh, Ukrainian authorities uh, will be working on this intensively. But, of course, this is only happening because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And this is the point. The river Dnipro is now effectively a watery front line separating both forces. Thanks very much, uh, James. James Waterhouse there for us live from Kiev. Well, let's hear now from Anna Matviva, visiting senior research fellow at King's College London, uh, that gave us this update on the Ukrainian offensive. Yes, it is a very significant moment, but we are going to have four months of very intense warfare. This is just the first wave. Um, in terms of uh, what happened overnight, the most significant news that uh, there is a power station in Kherson uh, province uh, at uh, New Kakhovka, uh, which has been hit overnight. It is quite a significant uh, power station, so there is mass flooding going on there. Uh, there is um, some evacuation going on. And the importantly, that there were the first kind of confirmed sightings that the uh, uh, German Leopard tanks and the uh, French tanks AMX-10 have been involved in that particular attack. That's the first time when we see um, these tanks, uh, these military vehicles, um, creating uh, quite significant damage. We have never seen that kind of conventional warfare. The, no, kind of con the tactics by the United States and its allies has been firstly to de denigrate the enemy from the air, kind of massive air raids uh, when more or less um, resistance is broken only then infantry troops artillery system tanks move in we saw the same in um, iraq uh, partly in syria certainly in afghanistan but here there is no real air capability because both sides have very formidable air defenses so we are going to have second world war type infantry warfare which is hugely costly certainly a lot of people are going to die that we have to admit now and uh, the outcome would be probably tactical gains for both sides um, ukraine certainly but it may be that the major battlefield configuration would remain largely stagnant